Colin, you saw a film called yes. Spinning Gold. Yeah. Which uh, I keep I keep seeing the trailers for. And I want to know. I look, I've seen the trailers for Spinning Gold. I want to know how this movie is. It looks mm -hmm. good. Period piece. It's you know, set in like the 70s. It's the rise of uh what's the record company? Casablanca Records. Casablanca Records, which I remember that logo and launched a ton of incredible acts. Yeah. Tell us about Spinning Gold. Okay, so Spinning Gold is the story of Neil Bogart, who is the founder of uh Casablanca Records. Uh he's he's this entertainer who realizes early in his life that he's not going to make it as an entertainer. And he decides to that that he he realizes he has this eye for talent. He's able to spot talent and uh, and not only spot talent but but really bring something special to their music. And so on the East Coast, he's working with Buddha Records, um, and he he's hooked up with the likes of the Isley Brothers. Uh, he he you know the Isley Brothers were a, a great group, but they were not you know they were kind of blackballed by by Motown Records, and so Bogart. Uh, takes them in and makes them big stars. Uh, Gladys Knight is the same thing. She was she's kind of on the tail end of her career when she meets Bogart, and um, and Bogart says that he need that she needs to leave her current record label, come to him, and uh, and they work on the song called Midnight Train to Houston, and um, and uh, Gladys Gladys Knight says no, we're we're changing that to uh, Georgia, and. Uh, and so he produces that massive hit for her and then realizing that um, that he, you know, he feels like he can go out on his own. He decides he's going to go to L.A. And in L.A. he he uh, spawns, he creates Casablanca Records and quickly uh, and, and he has two acts basically that he's trying to promote once he's in L.A. Kiss and Donna Summer. And um, and for some reason, the magic that he had in on the East Coast, he couldn't translate it to the West Coast. And um, and he wound up going about seven million dollars in debt, and uh, and so th that's kind of the story of that latter half of of how he was able to kind of turn things around, how he was able to make Kiss and uh, and Di Donna Summer a star, and um, but it's it this movie is is written directed by his son uh, Timothy, uh, the music the score is done by his son Evan. This is kind of an homage to their father. Uh, you know, they, they, the way he's portrayed in the movie is he's this really optimistic. He believes in people. He believes in people so much that he's willing to go not only $7 million in debt, but debt into the mob. Uh, he almost gets killed at, at one point for uh, for not coming through or for, for basically, um, you know, kind of treading into the territories of the other record companies. Um, so I'll say this. A uh, lot of great music in it. Uh, the actors sing the music, so they're not as great as the originals. Like the guys who play Kiss, eh, okay, they're they're not they're not Kiss. Um, to me, and I saw this with Mike MC Wong. Um, we had a good time, and I think we had a good time only because this is our era of music. Uh, I grew up in the '70s, early '80s. And so that was my music, and so this was a very nostalgic piece to me. I'm just not convinced that the that this movie is going to bring in a broader audience. Uh, it's very specific to that time, and uh, so I had a good time. I'm not sure my daughter would have a good time. Um, the music's fine. Um, so, and you know, and it falls into that biopic trope where you know you're just hitting the big moments of a person's life. Um, the, there's kind of this common theme where Jeremy Jordan, who plays Neil Bogart, he he narrates his story. Um, he breaks the fourth wall. He speaks to the camera. He even sings at times. If you know Jeremy Jordan, you know he can sing. Um, and uh, yeah, so, you know, I had fun, but I, I don't know that I, you know, I, I would kind of be very specific as to who I would tell to go see this movie. So is it a is it a mild recommendation it's or a mild very mild recommendation? Oh well, so that's which, which is going to be a theme uh, for the rest of today. Uh, well, it seems like you didn't like. Well, I saw a movie that I, I I hear what you're saying because I saw a movie that I felt very similarly. I could literally exchange the title; it would almost be a similar review. Mm -hmm. I saw a movie. We're going to talk about it because it doesn't come out for a while. 
called a uh, blackberry and it's about the making mm. of the blackberry oh yeah i didn't know about like the blackberry phone and they were they were manufactured in canada it was created by canadian engineers it became popular it was once 54 percent of the market mm -hmm. of of mobile phones they called it the crackberry you know because it it had the keyboard and then it's what killed the blackberry well you know the iphone but it goes yeah. into it and it's interesting you meet all the people behind it but it doesn't go into any depth in their story everyone's really one note and then i always wonder well what's the theme right like with these movies it's like and there's a lot of movies that seem similar in this there's a movie called pinball that's coming mm -hmm. out about the guy who when pin, pinball machines were illegal in new york in the 70s for some reason they associated it with gambling so there were no pinball machines in the city of new york and they fought back against this to bring back pinball machines yeah. there's tetris is coming out with taron edgerton there's uh another well, i mean I, I think what you're bringing up is the fact that I, I feel like a lot of these biopics that are coming out, um, they're being done for posterity's sake. Uh, I feel right, like, right. you know, because the sons were behind Spinning Gold, because uh, Bogart died in like 1983, um, that this was kind of their way of giving honor to their father, uh, who, right, who, was, right. who made a huge impact on the music industry uh, in the in the early 80s, late 70s. You know, and and a lot of these films, you feel like, yeah, it's there just because this is the only way their history and their story is going to get out, and so it's right it's there for posterity. Yeah, it's um, yeah, I I kind of felt that way. It's like it's like they're trying to preserve the memory, but then mm -hmm. also it's sort of like for history's sake, like sort of you know, like here's this story. But in order for something like this to work, because I saw a movie that's similar but did it great, great, mm -hmm. which you should go see tomorrow. We'll, we'll talk about it after Dungeons and Dragons, um, it, where it's like they're leaning into nostalgia. But what is the theme? Mm -hmm. I mean, look, you know, like with um, with Attack of the Dock, right? I'm not like bringing it like only because it's like I didn't just want to make oh, a documentary about Attack of the Show. I want to like say things about the culture. Yeah. I wanted to weave in some themes. And I feel like what I felt about um, this Blackberry movie, it's like, well, what? They were successful and then they weren't successful. But what yeah. does it's, it's a it's what a does it mean? dramatic documentary, basically? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like you have to, yeah. I mean, what are you saying by making this? You know, it's not yeah. just the you I know, mean, so. yeah. I mean, for, for this movie, Bogart was a guy who was optimistic, he believed in everybody, and uh, and he believed in them so much. He believed in his idea and concept so much that he was willing to, you know, again go seven million dollars in debt. And not really have a way of getting out of it until he figured it out. Um, but, you know, that's kind of, that's very buried in the movie. Um, and it only comes out in his personality as opposed to, um, you know, you're, you're kind of looking for those moments where where it's kind of brought up. And, and it's there, but it's just not done in a way that, um, you know, you, you kind of want it to come out more cinematic. I hate to use that word, but but it's true. Yeah, it looked, when, when I, when I see, I've seen the trailer and I'm like, I love all this music. This is an interesting era. Why do I care? What are the characters and the story, the themes? How am I, how can I, I have seen 10 seconds of a trailer in my life where I've been, I have to see this. Mm -hmm. The story that I'm immediately engaged and I've seen a bunch of these nostalgic movies. I haven't seen Tetris yet. I've seen Blackberry. I've seen a couple of others and, and, it has to be more than nostalgia. Yeah. It has to be saying something else. There has to be, um, uh, not that there has to be a message, but there has to be a theme or a thread or something meaningful rather than just, here's nostalgia, here's nostalgia. There's got to be more than that. So um, it yeah. sounds like your your recommendation is mixed. This looks, yeah. like, it looks like, it looks like a streaming movie is what it looks yeah. like. It, it is. It is. And I, I you know, Chris, you you grew up in that era. So I would say, you know, you'd probably like it a lot more than most people would. Um, yeah. Kiss, I mean, it's, it's amazing that, that kiss is the, was one of the first acts. Uh, the song Beth uh, is about Bogart's uh, first wife. Yeah. And um, so, uh, yeah, I, again, it, it's, it's nostalgic. It's history. Uh, I found it interesting. Uh, and now I'll move on to the next one. <laughs> 